Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast Run, episode 169, 69, that's nice, and this is my wrestling recap show, where once a week I go through all the major WWE and AEW shows, give you the recap, give you the review, let you know what's going on storyline-wise, and when we have a pay-per-view, I will be doing a pay-per-view review, and that's what we're doing right now. We are doing AEW's Full Gear 2024 in Newark. New Jersey. We got nine matches on the main card. I'm not doing the pre-show. I didn't watch the pre-show. There was already nine matches on this card. I'm good there. And there's five different title matches on the card as well. So let's dive into it. Let's get into it. It's kicking it off with a four-way tag team match for the AEW Tag Team Championships. We got Private Party, Isaiah Casty and Mark Quinn defending against Malachi Black and Brody King. Also defending against the Outrunners, Turbo Floyd and Truth Magnum. And finally defending against the acclaimed Anthony Bowens and Maximus Castorus. Max Caster. All right. Max, not paying attention, misses Bowens' tag. So these two are still on different pages. Malachi Moonsault takes out a group on the outside. House of Black get ganged up on Bowens, nails a scissor me timbers on Brody while he's being held down by everybody. That was pretty fun. Private Party with the stereo 450 splashes and the Outrunners kick out. Outrunners nail Brody with a total recall, but Max Caster is there for the save. Bowens and Max arguing. They Then Max tells Bowens to pin him, so... Acclaim try to pin them each other to win the match. That doesn't work. Very confusing. Acclaimed hit the arrival, but the mic drop does not connect. That is stopped with a gin and juice private party pin, and they retain. Zay steals a child and celebrates with that child in the crowd. And the kid, at one point, he's just like, I'm lost. I've lost my family. I am now... Yours, private party. You now have to take care of me. So hopefully that child found his way back to his family. But um, yeah, an interesting choice for the opening match. I really do wish it was an actual fatal four-way tag team match. It was two teams fighting at the same time with, you know, I I don't like that fashion. I I just, it's just not for me. And the finish of this match was pretty damn flat. The acclaimed, just that odd strategy trying to pin each other. It just didn't go over very good. Like it seemed like something was wrong. Someone maybe missed their cue on something, but it just didn't go over very well. Uh, I didn't really like the acclaimed in this match. They, you know, their odd, awkward breaking up situation that's going on right now just really didn't fit in with this match very well. It it wasn't for me. Uh, The other three teams, though, I thought had good performances. The Outrunners looked like they belong in the tag team division fighting with the top tier teams. So that was fun. I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. It was solid, not good, but definitely not bad or anything. We move to the next match. It is MJF Maxwell Jacob Friedman. He is back to take on Roderick Strong. And Roddy and Adam Cole had a three match series. First guy to get three wins will be the first guy to fight MJF. Now, if they both won three matches at uh then it would have been a triple threat. Of course, Maxwell got ahead of it, made sure Adam Cole wasn't going to get that third win so he didn't have to have a triple threat. So we have this match. Max grabs a microphone, sewers the New Jersey Fanes, and makes fun of Roddy's mama. Oh no, you didn't. Roddy cracks Max with a chop to shut him up. Max plants Roddy with a package DDT. Roddy locks in a clover clover leaf, but not for long due to his injured arm. Strong... Uh, Strong hits end of heartache out of nowhere. Max gets his foot on the ropes. Roddy lumbar check and a gut buster and a sick kick doesn't go for the pin. Max counters the end of heartache, locks in a wrist lock. Max snaps Roddy's finger, forcing a tap out, apparently breaking his fingers. MJF wins. A pretty standard feeling matchup right here. Didn't have much of that pay-per-view feel at all, honestly. I mean, MJF... 
entertaining performance in his return. Like he was doing his kind of over the top heel selling where if he gets hit with a move and he's airborne, he's like, oh shit. And he just gets nailed with it. I love that about Max. Roddy, solid as a rock, always going to give you a good performance out there. Lots of big, impressive offensive moves, but I didn't feel the hatred in this matchup. The build towards it was kind of weak with Max not being on TV. He would just have the odd appearance on video, kind of doing his thing, you know, making some shady deals with other wrestlers to interfere with uh, Cole and um, uh, Roddy. But, yeah, man, I don't know. The build-up to this match didn't feel very good. I thought there was a title on the line, but I, I, I guess I forgot Max doesn't have a championship anymore. So, yeah, I was just kind of all around uh, a little bit underwhelmed with this match right here. And then, 6 out of 10, 6 out of 10, Max attacks Roddy's arm with a chair, Adam Cole to the rescue, uh, but the damage is already done. So, as always, the, 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 the rescue always shows up too freaking late. Like, what the heck? All right, we move on to our next championship match. It is the TBS championship on the line. Mercedes Monet with Camille defends against Chris Statlander. The referee catches Monet cheating. The champ has a little bit of a meltdown about it. Monet with a great counter drives her knee into Statlander's neck. How you doing? Look painful. Mercedes lands awkwardly on her knee. Speaking of painful, that looked hella painful. She seems to be okay. I mean, it looked like a really nasty landing, but it didn't seem to bother her throughout the match. I haven't heard anything about an injury there. Monet caught and powerbombed hard into the corner. Mercedes backstabber and a nice Meteora. Chris able to kick out of that. Statlander wicked deadlift Saturday night. Fava and Monet able to kick out of that. Mercedes answers with a frog splash, but that is caught by Statlander, who nails an F5. Monet kicks out of that. Chris misses the 450 splash. Monet hits a moneymaker. Chris kicks out of that. And again, Wicked set up for another Saturday Night Fever, but Monet, biting Chris's leg, escapes. Monet slams Chris throat first into the ropes, gets the roll up, Mercedes pins, and retains. Ooh, baby, that was some damn fine wrestling right there from Statlander and Monet. Really strong performances. Lots of impressive counters. Lots of near falls. Maybe maybe too many near falls, like, kicking out of all the finishers. But, you know, I don't know. It made Statlander look like an absolute beast. Monet, good heel work throughout. I really like her having the meltdowns, screaming and yelling at the referee, and getting very frustrated throughout the match. That's That's good stuff. And a very worthy pay-per-view match. It felt bigger than a regular match. Monet, one of her better performances, I would say, so far in AEW. Seven and a half. Ah, done. Up next, you got Switchblade Jay White versus Hangman Adam Page. White tweaks his ankle. Hangman immediately targets Jay's damaged limb. Hangman takes a Snapdragon suplex on the apron and then another one on the floor. How you thawing? Hangman locks Jay in an ankle lock on the outside. They almost get counted out, but they do not. Hangman with two dead eyes. Jay kicks out. Jay then counters the buckshot. Hangman counters the counter into another ankle lock. Jay escapes with a blade runner out of nowhere. And again, Jay White defeats the Hangman. Good hard-hitting fight with uh, a wicked finish right there. Really good counter finish. Lots of work, uh, working down each other's injured body parts. Pretty normal stuff there. Some impressive counters. A little bit of stiffness. No shenaniganery. I like it. 7 out of 10. Adam and Jay get heated on the stage. Christopher Daniels gets knocked down in the crossfire. Jay White is concerned. But um, another match that didn't quite hit the level I was looking for... I felt the build to this match was pretty good. I mean, Jay White having the the long history of always having Hangman's number, Adam trying to change that, and he didn't. I enjoyed the the build up here, but the match, yeah, I don't know, just didn't quite hit that level. I don't think they're done with each other, especially if they're fighting after the match. So they will continue. I imagine just the start, but a good start. Seven out of ten. Now we go to Will Osprey versus Kyle Fletcher, one of the big. Big matches I'm excited for. Let's get into it. Fletcher hits a brain buster on the outside, hurting Osprey's injured everything. Osprey coming in with at least a whole roll of medical tape wrapped around his neck and his shoulders. Just, he's hurting. Um, speaking of hurting, Osprey's shoulder gives out. Kyle capitalizing with a boot to the head and a DDT. 
Will rallies with a wicked corkscrew dive to the outside. Osprey nasty chops, offers his own chest to Kyle, and Kyle instead super kicks Osprey in the face. That made me laugh. Osprey beautiful spin out power bomb. Kyle counters the Oz cutter, hits a last ride power bomb. We get near falls there. Osprey wants in on the Undertaker offense, nails a tombstone on the floor. My goodness. Kyle runs into a nasty hidden blade after numerous counters. Osprey counters into a Styles Clash, hits another hidden blade, and Kyle kicks out. Fletcher tombstones Osprey off of the apron onto the freaking steel steps. Oh my goodness. That's a thumbs up. That was ridiculous. Fletcher dumps Will on his head with a Grim Reaper. Somehow Osprey kicks out of that. He's damn near dead at this point. Osprey in a different planet. Kyle nails a brutal running kick and even more brutal turn an even more brutal turnbuckle brain buster. Fletcher pins and defeats Will Osprey. Wow. Biggest singles win right there for in AEW for Kyle Fletcher. Very nice. An amazing performance. Neither men what what blows my mind is that neither men is like barely sweating at all after this match. It was a long match with ridiculous pace and they're fucking dry as a bone like how is that possible absolutely crazy non-stop pace throughout the whole entire match awesome counters brutal stiffness and bumps and i cannot believe it but no shenanigans just a pure one-on-one wrestling match between two extremely extremely talented wrestlers and this match left more to there's definitely more they're gonna do more eight and a half out of ten absolute Binger. We go now to Mariah May finally having a proper celebration for her big championship win, which felt like forever ago. She's finally celebrating it with Mina Shirakawa. Mariah says she's ended the women's division. May goes to attack Mina with a wine glass. What the fucking fuck? But it fails. Mina goes berserk, tackles May off of the stage through a table, sort of. May is bleeding, and Mina turns into some sort of vampire creature feasting on Mariah May's blood. Whoa. Every freaking time, man. Something, it seems to be going all good for Mina. She gets freaking blindsided by something. This time, now it's her other new friend, Mariah May, blindsiding her. And yeah, this is going to be a vicious feud. Uh, Mina has gone loco, and Mariah May is going to have to pay the Pipers, so these two are going to get into, uh, I am, I, I'm pretty excited about this one, it should be a lot of fun, it should, I hope it's going to get violent, and it should be entertaining, I, I'm looking forward to this one, so that'll be fun, we move now to the TNT Championship match, Jack Perry defending against Danny Garcia, Danny whooping Jack all around ringside, getting some revenge early, Perry power bombs Danny through the timekeeper's table and dumps a whole trash bin of garbage on top of Garcia, burying him. That made me giggle. I'll hit that with a thumbs up. Menard, fired up after being pushed by Jack, hypes up Danny to get back into the fight. Danny grabs the belt. Perry, daring Garcia to hit him with it. Referee takes the belt away. Perry low blows Danny. Garcia comes back again with a nasty pile driver. Jack kicks out. Garcia, another pile driver, locks in the sharpshooter, pulling way, way, way back, forcing Perry to tap out. And no, TBS champion, it's Danny Gar freaking Sia. Really solid comeback matchup right here. Danny Garcia finally gets the single gold in front of his family. That's really nice. Great moment right there. Perry, a solid run as champion. I felt like he defended it fairly often and would have quality matches. But overall, I am not really buying into the Danny Garcia storyline. This feels like he's uh, taking over for Ricky Starks. This feels very similar to Ricky's story and Ricky being injured. Maybe they just latch it on to Danny Garcia. And I think Danny did a good job. It's just, I was, I'm not buying it. I just, I don't know. Like, I'm just not really that big of a fan of Danny Garcia. I think he's fine. I'm really happy he's getting an opportunity here, but we'll see what happens with him. It's just, I don't know, man. It just feels way too samey. Just uh, too many other guys doing the same thing right now. And I don't know. It just kind of feels like he got pushed into this one. And 
we'll see where it goes again happy for the guy i think jack perry did a, a decent job i hope they keep that championship design kind of that smoked out black belt i think it looks gorgeous so keep it like that and you know the storyline coming into it jack and garcia obviously having a lot of a lot of fights going on but they didn't i get i always felt like they felt forced last week they they had the bus thing where they were uh, jack attacks menard straps him up to the back of the bus or whatever and like i don't know it just felt really it didn't look very good like the chain was barely on him and menard you know, barely got attacked and he's sitting there coughing a lung up and i don't know man it just didn't feel very real it, it just felt forced and produced it just didn't feel natural for me so i personally didn't get into it but we'll see how danny garcia does the match was solid six and a half ah uh, time we got the international championship matchup next. Kanosuke Takeshka defending against Ricochet. Ooh. Ricochet gets caught up in the ropes. Takeshka running kicks. Nasty bump for Ricochet. He falls to the floor. Takeshka drops Ricochet back first onto the barricade. Pretty nasty. Ricochet springboard 450 gets a near fall, making Don Callis show up to ringside. Takeshka, big offense, hits a power drive knee. Ricochet kicks out of that. Ricochet nails a shooting star press. Takeshka kicks out. Callis on the outside, almost having a freaking heart attack. Pretty entertaining. Takeshka, nice driver counter out of Ricochet's vertigo. Takeshka, avalanche, falcon. It looked like a falcon arrow. Might have been a, a brain buster. Uh, pins Ricochet and retains right there. Uh, a good competitive match. Uh, the beginning of this one was slow, just Takeshka wearing down Ricochet, trying to keep him grounded. Pretty boring stuff, you know, I, I'm not too into that. It did kick into gear, some nice counters and near falls and shit like that. Some nice high flying. No shenanigans, or not a lot of. I mean, Don was there, but I don't think he really did anything. Again, it was a good match, but I wanted more, man. It kind of felt a little bit standard. Uh, it did kick into that kind of pay-per-view gear I was looking for towards the end, but... I don't know, man. Like, Ricochet versus Takeshka, I was hoping for more. And though Ricochet has had a good run so far in AEW, he's he's leaving me wanting more. Like, I know there's more there. I I just don't know, man. I don't, I don't like, maybe like, Ricochet's not, like, the oldest guy. I, he definitely has a lot more in the tank. It's just, I don't know. So far, I've been a slightly underwhelmed with Ricochet in AEW. But it was a good match. 7 out of 10. But honestly, on paper, this, for me, should have been like a, a guaranteed 8 out of 10. But it just didn't quite get there. Uh, yeah, disappointed. We got Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana versus Bobby Lashley with the Hurt Syndicate up next. Bobby displaying his power, slamming Swerve all over the ring with ease. MVP causing distractions on the outside. The referee ejects Shelton Benjamin and only Shelton Benjamin. This slightly pleases Nana. Swerve, suplex, or a DDT attempt. Bobby takes a awkward fall off of the apron. Don't know what the hell happened there. Swerve, stomp off of the stairs. Puts Lashley through the Spanish announce table. That was impressive. Thumbs up. We get a house call, and the stomp connects on the inside of the ring, but Lashley kicks out. Bobby spears Swerve through the barricade, as is tradition. Lashley, another spear, applies the hurt lock on Swerve, who passes out. Bobby Lashley wins his first pay-per-view in AEW, defeating a former world champion in Swerve. So that's a big win. Lashley looking good. I mean, he took those stomps like a champ. That was good. Swerve getting tossed around. Nice selling. A good rally from Swerve in this match. I Yeah, pretty good start for Bobby Lashley. 7 out of 10. Doesn't look like Bobby's going to be phoning it in. He looks like how he was in uh, WWE, and he he, did, he had a really good run there in WWE, his, what, third, second, third time around? Anyway, 7 out of 10. Hurt Syndicate not done yet with Lashley, or um, not done yet. Lashley puts Nana in the Hurt Lock this time. Swerve can't do anything about it. He's outnumbered, so he has to watch. Like we are about to watch the main event. It is the AEW World Championship match. John Moxley with the Death Riders defends against Orange Cassidy. This has been the company's biggest storyline for quite some time now. Moxley kind of doing a spin on the shield. He's got this new group that continuously uh, arrives through the crowd and causes a ruckus, disrupting matches and trying to take over the company, so on and so forth. And AEW 
homegrown talent, one of the OGs, Orange Cassidy has had enough, and he is here to defend his company and his roster, his his other fellow wrestlers and friends. All right, so we get into it. Cassidy explodes out of the gate with numerous orange punches and a dive to the outside, almost ends the match early. Moxley gets back into it, stomps Orange's face into the steps, causing a very, very bloody orange. Moxley hits Orange with a Death Rider on top of the steps, my goodness. Moxley cutting Cassidy's back with his fingernails, and like, you can visibly see the blood, like the scratch, like, Cassidy's back getting ripped open and the blood coming out just oh like you could feel that pain just ugh, awful Cassidy lovely diving DDT gets some life Cassidy hits two more orange punches a roll up and Moxley kicks out Moxley hits a nasty lariat orange pops right back up shocking Moxley's what the fuck Riders surround the ring the conglomeration arrive to fight them off big brawl taken taken off Rocky Romero, huge dive, takes out everybody. And then Willow Nightingale arrives to save Cassidy from Marina Shafir with a spear. Cassidy uses the steel case on Moxley, pins, and Moxley kicks out. Mox grabs a referee. Yuta delivers a psycho knee to to Cassidy while the referee is indisposed. Moxley nails a Death Rider, pins, and retains. Ah. A real dirty slobber knocker of a match. JR was on commentary for a few of the matches tonight. Orange's hair is dyed red with the blood. Just nasty scratch marks on his back. Really took a beating there from Moxley, who was very stiff. Lots of stiff strikes. Great strong style wrestling from Moxley. Cassidy, awesome emotional performance. I love when these two go after each other. I think their other matches were better, but I feel like we're just getting started here, so... Don't want to, you know, blow your load on the first match. Banger, though. And that. Uh, the beatdown on Cassidy continues. Riders pouring sanitizer or something in Orange's mouth. I don't know why. Hangman arrives, possibly to pull his teeth out, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, Hangman arrives angry with a chair, gets in Moxley's face. The fuck? And then Christian, sneak attack, nails Moxley with an unprettier, looking to cash in his contract. Oh, my God. But it's Hangman. He takes the contract and will not give it back to Christian. Jay White shows up. He attacks Hangman, ruining his fun. And Christian's cash-in attempt is spoiled. Death Riders making their escape. Somebody crashes a car into the Death Riders truck. So the Riders steal another vehicle and escape. Darby Allen was in the car, failing to stop Moxley. He's like, ah, come back here. I'm hurt now. Ah." And that's the show. A long four-hour full gear event. Pretty solid crowd uh, energy throughout. I mean, they weren't the craziest crowd, but they weren't dead silent. They just, you know, they didn't really add a lot. The opening would have been a lot better if, uh, honestly, if the Acclaimed weren't in it. Just too many teams right now across, like, all of wrestling are doing the, the fucking tag team potential breakup. I swear there's, like, four or five teams doing this right now, and... The Acclaimed are one I just really don't want to see it with right now. And, I don't know, the New Day are kind of doing it a lot better over there in WWE. We'll see where it goes. MGF versus Roddy was slightly underwhelming. I felt like there was supposed to be a US Championship or something like that on the line, but no. So that's weird. Danny versus Perry, it was a quality match. I just, I never got into the storyline or the Garcia hype train. So, I didn't get into that match as much as, like, it was good. I just... Didn't, didn't get there with the storyline for me. And would have liked more from that international championship match. I mean, it had Show Stealer written all over it. And it was good, but yeah, just it didn't hit that other level I was looking for. Uh, on the other side, Monet having one of her best matches in AEW with Statlander. I really like their chemistry. I hope they will continue to fight with each other. May turning on Mina, that was a fun, you know, mid-show palate cleanser, a little something different, a little bit of drama there, and didn't really see that one coming. And then a beaten up Osprey still having bangers versus Fletcher. I mean, I th- Osprey has done nothing but, you know, steal every show that he's been on. He's been fantastic. And Kyle Fletcher getting a huge win. He's like as good as Osprey in terms of in-ring ability. Now he's got this you know, heel storyline going around him. I'm very excited for Kyle Fletcher right now. 
the main event hit enough story points to keep it going you know this this huge storyline that they got going so they're keeping that going they hit some good points without taking too much away from the matchup you know they didn't have too much interference too much baloney on the outside to take away from the great war that was that main event match between Cassidy and Moxley so pretty satisfied with that we'll see um how Cassidy is going to respond uh being taken down I imagine the fight will continue maybe he gets some new allies maybe this time he lets the conglomeration help him out we'll see what happens there all I can say is that it's uh, more than likely not over overall I think the show was a little bit of a grind uh didn't quite hit the levels for an AEW pay-per-view I was looking for I would hit it with a solid six and a half out of ten maybe push it to a seven I can I can I can argue with seven it was good but just very long I don't know man it's just a lot of the matches I was looking very forward to didn't quite hit there the only one that really really hit the way I was expecting it to is Osprey versus Fletcher and yeah man I mean the storyline that's going on with Moxley and Cassidy AEW versus Death Riders it's good it's just been done a thousand times already you know NWO did it DX the fucking shield the Nexus it's been done a lot of times just now we're doing it in AEW and so far I don't know man like the way that Moxley's talking it's just so much like shrouded mystery and stuff I don't know like we'll we'll see where it's going I'm here I'm watching it it's not the most compelling like I'm not necessarily drawn in as to dynamite as as must see dynamite I'm like oh like what Moxley's gonna come out he's gonna brag he's with oh look we're we're the better we're too strong we're we're gonna change things and what Cassie's gonna come out and and then what like he he lost so we'll see where that one goes doesn't really make me want to have to watch the next show but I probably will and well I definitely will so there you go uh apologies for not having content out this week I was hella sick and just just couldn't I was just in I just couldn't do anything so I I I bided my time got better and here we are so there's gonna be a little bit of an explosion of content here in the next couple days gonna have uh this AEW pay-per-view review I'm not gonna do a recap from last week's wrestling we'll just skip that apologies it is what it is we'll just continue on with the next week and the hockey cast will be coming we got a pokemon snap retrospective coming out for the gamer cast this week so yeah i got y'all covered i got y'all covered so it's just a little bit behind this week but we'll catch up let me know what you thought of the full gear pay-per-view if you checked it out overall it's if you need wrestling go ahead check it out it's wrestling there's lots of it um if you skip it you skip it if you if you only have a little bit of time definitely check out the main event and check out Osprey versus Fletcher and if you want some really good women's wrestling Monet versus Statlander was a very very good matchup right there outside of that nothing really eye-catching for me if you are a huge Danny Garcia fan then you're, you're definitely a happy person right now just didn't do a lot for me but yeah let me know what your favorite and least favorite matches were there were no bad matches absolutely no bad matches Uh, just underwhelming I don't know usually AEW is good for stepping up their game for for pay-per-views uh just you know I I will give them some leniency I know the roster's banged up it's always banged up and and shit happens but I liked it it was good I'd probably I'll push it to a seven it was a good show but not definitely not going to be one of my favorites of the year but there you go everybody the full gear review be on the lookout for a hockey cast I'll be uh working on that next and get that out as soon as possible and uh, the Pokemon Snap retrospective will be coming out this week. So stick around with that. Got a Twitter page where I have not used it at all. I should have put up announcements letting people know that I won't be recording this week. But oh well, it is what it do. So there's a Twitter page you can go follow along with. There's a YouTube channel. I upload all of these episodes in their entirety onto the YouTube channel, Gamer GX Videos. Go over there, subscribe, check it out. And um, yeah, email address. You can check that one out as well. Send in uh, messages if you want to have a question answered live on the podcast. Drop a comment on YouTube, Twitter, email. Anything about wrestling, video games, or hockey would be preferred. I will try my best on other things. I can cook decently, so if you've got cooking questions, uh, hit me up. I make, a, I make a mean chili, so there's that, and there we go. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. You the best. You want to be even more of the best, make sure you're reviewing and liking the podcast. Share it around with a couple thousand of your friends and, and some enemies. Why not some enemies? So let them know what you're into, and uh, we will be back again very shortly with Samo GX Plus, yes.